G'day folks, thanks for tuning in. Today's video is another in a series on colour theory, where we'll be exploring purple. We're going to look at three types of purple, cool, warm and neutral, and as always we'll be using these space marines for their readability. However this time, instead of making our purple over unique foundational colours, we're instead going to be starting with the same purple and letting our highlight colours shape it. We'll be using a blue and red for this, as well as a pale yellow, as being complementary to purple, yellow will help us if we need to bring things back towards neutral. Green's another option for this, especially with more reddish purples. Like always, I want to stress that you don't need these specific paints that I'm using, and should instead focus on the general hue. But for reference, I'll be using dioxazine purple from Winsor & Newton's Winton line for our foundational colour, as it's cheap, fairly neutral, and stains well, making it good for this purpose. Another option is this Egyptian violet from Williamsburg. However, it's pricier than the Winton, and I find it almost too potent for its own good. If you've seen my video on yellow, it has similar staining properties to Williamsburg's Indian yellow, and can be difficult to work with if you're not expecting how overpowering it can be. I'll also be using these custom metallic gold paints for the trim and other details, specifically sunset gold and solar gold, as that yellow will pop nicely against all the purple. I'll link the video that covers how to make these in the description. So let's get started. We'll be starting with a large round synthetic brush. I like using old brushes for these, as the splayed bristles will really help our paint get into the recesses. We'll also need a cap of thinner of your choice to help us with the adhesion as needed. I like to start with a touch of thinner, if any at all, as with oils, thin paint sticks to thick paint and vice versa. By starting with less thinner, we give ourselves plenty of room to add more, so I'm just using enough that I can work the purple into all the nooks and crannies. How much this takes will vary from paint to paint but it's always easier to add than take away, so I recommend starting small. The goal here is to cover the whole mini in our foundational layer, which we'll be wiping the bulk of away, and using the stain that's left behind to influence our subsequent layers. This is another reason to go easy on the thinner at this stage, as the more we add, the less effective our stain will be. Now not every paint will stain, and some will stain differently than others, but generally darker pigments do better than lighter ones. This dioxazine purple is a good one, as you'll see shortly. Now this step can get messy, so I recommend doing it over a surface you're not too attached to. That said, the spatter is easy enough to clean, with a paper towel and a bit of thinner, like so. And these are looking a right mess, but we're setting ourselves up for success here. I like to let them sit for 5-10 to 10 minutes to give the paint a bit more time to stain. Now that things have had a chance to set, I'll be using these latex free makeup sponges to remove the excess paint. These come in bulk for cheap, and are great for this purpose. You can see as I wipe it away that we're left with a nice purple tint over the primer, which is a light grey acrylic primer from Vallejo. I find neutral grey primers are the most flexible for testing colours, but they also make it easier for you to see on camera. Feel free to experiment with different coloured primers, and using one that more closely matches your base tone can be a good way to go. We'll do the same with the bases, using a different sponge to avoid mixing. That said, it's no problem if and when that does happen, particularly on the legs, as it just leads to a more integrated look that we can always paint over if we don't like. Next we'll be adding our unique initial layers, and we'll see just how different we can make this purple. I'd like to use filbert brushes for this step, which you can buy or make by trimming the corners off of a flat brush. The shape lets us cover a lot of area quickly, while allowing us to be more precise and directional with our brush strokes than a round brush would. I'll keep the focus on each marine individually this time, so you can keep an eye on the palette, which I've put both our purple and brown out on. For the first marine I want to keep things fairly neutral, relative to the purple. Now you might be happy to just add white here, and while you wouldn't be wrong, I want to show you just how a bit of colour theory can help us get a more interesting result. A few quick strokes with the white and we get a decent highlight that isn't too dissimilar to the highest points where the prime is most visible. But if I instead add a bright desaturated yellow, like this brilliant yellow pale, you'll see on the palette and the mini that we get an interesting looking grey, due to the complementary yellow and purple cancelling each other out. Complementary colours generally look good next to each other, but you can also use complements when mixing your shadows and highlights to make them a lot more visually interesting than straight white or black. Dealer's choice of course, but since this is a colour theory video, I'll be sticking with this yellow. It only takes a few seconds to grab some purple and reset the other pauldron, and by using a bit less yellow we can create a nice mid-tone, which we can then apply over the rest of the mini. The filbert brush really helps us blend these layers smoothly, as does keeping our brush light when it comes to the amount of paint that we use. Again, we want to leave ourselves room here, so at this stage I'm not using any thinner, and I tend to wipe my brush off on a paper towel gently before applying. If you find your paint isn't adhering, then go ahead and add just a touch of thinner, remembering that you can add more paint to the palette if you need to thicken it back up, or just move on to a new spot. 
and progressively adding more yellow for my highlights, focusing on a smaller area where I want my light to be catching. You don't have to be this incremental either. In fact, I encourage you to take bigger steps in value than I am here, as the blending properties of oils let you cover a lot of ground really quickly. For the next marine I'm adding Prussian blue, which is quite a potent blue with strong staining properties. Because of this I overestimated how much I need of a mix, and if you get a glimpse of the right pauldron you'll see the result. No worries though, I can just come back in with more of the purple and try it again. But it turns out that even a touch of this Prussian blue will make itself known, so we're going to roll with it. Purple on the mini is still having an effect, and if I don't go back as often for more paint, it'll gradually come through, giving us a bit of a deep blue violet. Now not all blues will behave this way, which is why I don't like to prescribe specific colours for any given scheme. Use what you have or what appeals to you, and learn how that paint behaves, and you'll be setting yourself up for long-term success. As oil painters, we really don't need more than a few colours in our collection, which is admittedly something I need to remind myself of often, so build yourself a foundation and find what works for you. To brighten this mix, I'll be adding white to give myself a better sense of where I'm headed with this tone. I can also add a bit of radiant violet, or just add more white and purple together to try to nudge things a little back towards red. The application's the same as the previous marine, and will be for the next. Thankfully these colours all cover pretty well, so we won't have as much brusque work management here as we've had in other videos. The last marine is getting some fanchion red added to the purple. I'm a bit gun shy after that blue, and while I know from experience that this colour isn't particularly staining, it's still quite opaque, so I'm taking it slow and leaning into the purple a bit more, but we still get this beautiful, rich, warm purple. And again, to preserve this tone, I'm adding just a bit of white for those early highlights. Again, reducing my area of application as I go up in value, using little to no thinner, and keeping my brush minimally loaded. And for the bases, I'm just throwing some white and brilliant yellow pale into the brown to vary our tones. Doing a quick overbrush and letting the textured paste do the work for us. And here they are so far. With just a single colour, or two if you want to count the white, we can get a drastically different result over the same purple foundation. Next we're going to bring some of that original purple back in, and see how much different it looks going in the other direction. Here we'll use a smaller round brush like the size 0. Older brushes are also fine here, as we're just going to be blocking in paint using a separate brush to actually blend with. I need a bit of thinner here so that it'll stick, and I'm just gently tapping it on as the more we work it, the more it'll mix, both on the brush and the model. We're wanting to block in as much pure purple as we can in the parts of the model that we want to be in shadow. Then we take a clean, dry, round brush and gently tap the side of it against that purple. This scumbling technique allows us to get some very smooth blends. The key is to keep the brush as clean as possible by wiping it off regularly, and to tap, not brush, against the areas that we want blended. This will minimise the amount of paint being pulled around, and can be used to tidy up visible brush strokes too. By putting this purple back into the shadows, we're bringing our overall tone back towards our foundation, and since it's mixing with the mid-tones, we can still use that same purple for our deeper shadows later on, without the need of a dark colour or a black. Now you might be tempted to use the blending brush on the whole model, especially if you're having trouble with visible brush strokes, but I find it saves time to stick out the ugly phase and use your blending brush in conjunction with other steps like this one. It also saves your effort as you're not working the same areas multiple times with each new shadow or highlight. So we've got some rich purple shadows blocked in, but we can go darker, especially in the recesses. So next we'll be applying some pin line washes with that purple. To make a pin line wash we need a lot of thinner, as we want capillary action to draw our paint into the recesses where our brush can't reach. I like to use a long thin liner brush for this step to help facilitate that. We want enough that it'll flow into the recesses without spilling out onto the rest of the mini. You can see me go back and forth here, gradually adding more and testing it against the miniature. Ideally, we just tap the brush against the recess and let that magic happen, but you can see it's stubbornly blobbing and beating up. It's really no problem though, because we can just blend all that back in once we've given the thinner a chance to evaporate. I like to test on downward facing recesses, as the right amount will also defy gravity. I often get asked how much thinner to use, but the truth here is that there's no universal answer, as each paint is going to behave differently. It's also going to depend on the paint you're trying to stick to, so I wanted to show you more of the process here and hopefully encourage you to experiment. Just take your time, and remember that it's always easier to add than it is to take away. And you can see that despite blending it into our shadows, that pure purple is still dark enough on its own that we can use it for our recesses to get even more definition. 
Now we need to let that excess sit and evaporate for 10 to 20 minutes before we can blend it away. Otherwise the thinner will erase our work. So next we're going to work on the trim and weapons to keep us busy. I'll link the video in which we made these gold paints in the description. But you could also buy metallic oil paint, like the silver from Gamblin that I have out on the palette. I thought it would be fun to put these to use, as gold and purple is always a winner. So let's start with the sunset gold. The purple on the model will both shade and desaturate it, doing a lot of work for us. I'm covering the chest eagles, the weapon casings and the shoulder pad trim to frame our marine with a nice accent colour. Now these are still oil paints and blend just as well as our traditional colours, so we can seamlessly layer on more sunset gold here before moving on to solar gold for the edges and upward facing areas. And we can still blend in any spillover with our blending brush, though we still want to be a bit careful as those flakes can be harder to cover up and leave us with a sparkly purple armour which if I'm honest, might not be a bad thing either. Now here I thought I'd put out indigo to shade my silver with, but it turns out it was perlene black, which is a dark green. But since green's also complementary to purple, we're going to go with it. It doesn't look too bad, but I do prefer a dark blue to shade the grey metals with. That said, it's always worth experimenting. Finally, we come back with some pure silver to highlight all the metals, as that really helps those golds pop. We repeat this process on the other marines, but here I also took care of some of the smaller details like the leathers, the purity seals and the lenses. If you're interested in seeing that, you can find raw footage of this and my other videos over on the Patreon, which I'll link in the description. You can also get early access to YouTube content there, and it's a great way to support the channel, which helps me produce more videos like this. So thanks a bunch. So here's our gold and finer details across all three marines. Same gold, but it pops slightly differently for each one, due to the contrast both in the armour and the mixing. Next we're going to quickly tidy up that spillover from the washers, which should have largely evaporated by now. Real straightforward here. We take our blending brush and scumble over those blemishes from the wash stage. We are rewarded for our patience here, as it all blends away seamlessly due to that thinner evaporating. In most cases it shouldn't take more than 15 to 20 minutes, but I recommend testing your blending brush against a location you can take a chance on, just in case. If it's erasing instead of blending, give it a little bit longer. We can also use this opportunity to tidy up some of our rougher highlights, as next we'll be coming in with a finer brush for all those edges. We'll be tackling those final highlights and returning the colour theory as we explore some options there. Once again I'll be showing these individually, as I think the palette's important to see here. No surprises with our first marine, as we'll be sticking with Brillin Yellow Pale, with just a touch of our original purple. I'm using a finer brush here as we're going for edge and specular highlights, tracing it along the edges and letting the sculpt work for us. If our edge highlights end up too chunky, we can use our blending brush to tap it all back in. And we come around again with more brilliant yellow pale for the uppermost edges, corners and highlights. The yellow contrasts nicely with the purple, desaturating it naturally as we go up in value and giving our edges a real pop. For our warm purple marine, I'm going with radiant green. As mentioned, green is another complement to purple, and it's also a complement to red so it's a great candidate for a redder purple like this one. Now it looks very green grey on the palette, but once it's on the marine it looks a lot more at home. And again that colour contrast gives us a real visual interest, as does the temperature contrast, with that cool green against our warm purple. Because of this you could likewise use a dark green for your shadow colour. This is where colour theory can give you a ton of options, and my hope with these videos is to get you to play with it and explore some of the possibilities. Lastly our cool purple marine is getting a highlight of radiant violet, which you could substitute with white and our purple if you're not lazy like I am. He's still looking very blue, so the hope is that the violet highlight will frame the purple shadows and pull it together a bit more. We could also go back to the midtones with purple if we wanted, as all of this will still be workable even a day or two from now. That's the beauty of oils to me, that flexibility. We're never locked into our choice, and with a bit of colour theory we can usually mix and blend our way until we get the result we want. Very rarely do I feel like I've wasted time exploring. And here's the final result. This is just a small example of some of the possibilities with purple, and all you need is a couple of colours and some basic colour theory to get started. And here they are a few days later after they've dried. I've not varnished them this time, as I find oils don't really need it unless you're looking to change the finish, and I wanted to preserve those metallics. Let me know which one's your favourite down in the comments. Thanks very much for spending time with me here today. If you have any questions about any of the products or techniques I've talked about, or have a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, I'd love to hear it. And again, thanks very much for being here and take care.